Hello, my name is uh, Andres uh, Jara. I'm the, from Colombia. I'm 31 years old and I'm a farmer and a chef. My farm is this task Huntenburg. We are five friends on this and we do this part time. We supply food for more or less 300 people a year. Uh, for 30 weeks a year and then basically what we have is a uh, community supported agriculture so we do packages of vegetables to be delivered into the city that you can pick up my other project is called uh, roots rice and beans is um, it was born during the first lockdown of corona and then i saw that because of the lockdown of restaurants i saw a challenge of my uh, colleague farmers that are around that they have a uh, problem selling their products and then I decided to, took, to take action so I decided to buy everything from them and develop really nice organic seasonal plant-based products for the citizens of Amsterdam and this started four months ago now business uh, is growing we are helping more farmers we are making our transformation in the, in the kitchen republic so everything is grown in Amsterdam around Amsterdam transformed in Amsterdam and sold in Amsterdam I'm from Colombia, um, I studied there, so I, over there I become a cook. Then uh, I live in Peru for two years, in which I learned even more about Peruvian cuisine in South America, and this is where I start paying attention to just not transforming ingredients into something delicious, but more of um, where is your food coming from? Meet the person that is behind producing your food. This is where I got this opportunity to open my eyes to realize it's just not going to the supermarket and buying food and then transforming it. It's knowing who grows your food, where is your food coming from, how many kilometers your food is traveling in order to come to, to you. Then I moved to Argentina, I lived there and I also learning about asado and wine also increasing my knowledge uh, in culinary arts. I went back to Colombia, I started my own business. I had a catering business for two years. And then the, after that, I, I saw that in Italy, there is the University of Gastronomic Sciences. And I fell in love immediately with the, uh, with the program. So it's the, basically the University of Slow Food. After reading the, the website and the program, I did the application immediately I got accepted and then I moved to Europe and over there we study uh, gastronomic sciences so it's not about cooking and uh, transforming food but more about chemistry microbiology uh, sensorial analysis of taste law semiotics philosophy agriculture animal production so basically every topic regarding food so he is Koji he is from the farm he is our, our guardian so he stayed here and uh, he is our pest manager control relationship with food starts from very young age I remember this is stories that my grandmother tells me because I don't remember much that uh, I wanted to cook always for my family. So she was uh, holding me when I was four years old and I was making breakfast for everyone. So basically, since a very young age, I always show interest for cooking and eating. I love to eat, so. My grandmother is an empiric chef, so she didn't study, but she was a grandmother, you know, a mom and a grandmother, so she was always feeding us. Every time you go to her, to her house, she have a, food, stews, beans, cakes, juice, desserts, so she's always feeding and it's like expressing love through food. So I got this um, energy from her, you cook for others and feed other people. This actually was my first connection with, with food coming from my grandmother. So also due to the pandemic, uh, people start realizing it was like an awakening for them. So people start asking for more local, seasonal, organic vegetables. We have a waiting list of more than 100 people, for example, right now. And uh, before we didn't even imagine to have 100 people on a waiting list. And now the request of people wanting to have organic vegetable products, it's, it's insane. People are now paying attention more where their food is coming from. And we have given the option so everything started with this product. This is the uh, motion ragu, uh, bolognese that is meatless. So it's a 46% motion. And all of this started because of one of the colleagues from the farmers that are around here. 
she had this surplus because of uh, the lockdown of the restaurants. She was having a lot of trouble because she had 150 kilos of mushrooms and she didn't know what to do with them. And the shelf life of the mushrooms are between four to five days. So I decided to took action and then I just bought all of the harvest and then I start making these ones. From that on, different products, uh, different ideas came along. This is the tomatillo sauce. Tomatillo is a specific variety of tomato that is grown in Mexico for their salsa verde, for the tacos. You can find it everywhere actually. We grow them here in this form over there, but now it's winter so you cannot see them. So you don't have to travel the whole world to try the traditional salsa verde. We did this recipe when I was living in Tuscany with a friend. We tried this and it was a winner sauce. So now we're doing it here in the Netherlands. That is a um, hot sauce. So it's the traditional recipe of my grandmother. People love it. The traditional sauce that you will find in the market. And it's actually really nice. It's just very humble ingredients, just uh, five ingredients. So it's just oil, onion, tomato, garlic, and salt. And that's it. Ah, chilies, of course. But then the complexity of flavors, the earthiness, the umaminess, it's just uh, amazing. You can, it's, people call it even uh, magic sauce because it transforms everything good into something delicious. So this is the greenhouse. Here in summer we go tomatoes, bell peppers, aubergines, chilies, and right now it's uh, the Asian greens, mustard, salad, some spinach, in the side we're growing some uh, green manures. We even grow ginger here and uh, turmeric. Just making some experiments to share with people that uh, you can grow also those crops in the Netherlands without heated greenhouses because this greenhouse is not heated, it's just heated by the sun. So we need to do this in, the, in summer in order to let the, the greenhouse breathe because if not it would be too hot for the plants.